What music are you into? I like this. What is going on, guys? It's the Big Fish Plays, and welcome back to Top Drives. And I have a swong nearby. Hello. Wonderful. I'm excited to learn. Welcome back to Top Drives, and welcome to the first part of a three-part series on a beginner's guide to top drives. In this first part, we'll be talking about the basics of the game and some important beginner mistakes to avoid. And then in part two, we'll be covering understanding the game mechanics and cars. And in the third and final part, we'll be looking at a way of best... And in the third part, we'll be looking at the best ways to earn or and spend your cash and gold. So basically, a uh, guide to finances in a game where finances are very important. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of these important parts to become a better top drive player. And for any of the more seasoned players, if you happen to watch this video and I happen to have missed something important, let me know in the comments down below and perhaps I could do a fourth video just to cover any things I may have missed. But without further ado, let's dive into part one on basics and beginner mistakes to avoid. First up, let's talk about understanding the RQ system. So as you can see here in the top of the screen, it says RQ500. So this is your player sort of experience slash RQ level. Basically, the more you play, you will gain more experience points and level up in RQ. Um, and then this RQ will be also used to determine matchmaking in events, um, like who you're up against, and also the difficulty of the requirements in your events, because as you're in the lower RQs, it's assumed your garage won't be as diverse. So the events, instead of say, maybe it's a front wheel drive event, instead of needing five front wheel drive cars, maybe you only need four or three. So you can put something else like, I don't know, a sneaky McLaren F1. <clears throat> Swan. <laughs> yeah, just gonna put this out there. Swan's been playing for a week and he's got a McLaren F1 legendary already and it took me 200 days to get my first one when I was ready RQ 500 but just gloss over that not jealous or envious or annoyed or anything like that okay moving on uh so <laughs> so this RQ at the top is very important because it's also the maximum RQ you can go in any event with so say I don't know the event's an open event with 500 RQ limit um, but you've only got 300 RQ, means you can only go in with a deck that has a maximum of 300 RQ. But at the same time, leading on to my next point, it's very important that you don't level up your RQ too quickly. So just quickly, every car's got an RQ level in the bottom left. So as you can see, Bugatti Chiron's 99, goes from 100 all the way down to 10, with all the best cars at 10, obviously. These wonderful Volkswagen Type 2s with no 0 to 60 time. It's important you understand how the RQ works. Now, leading on to the next point, it's very important that you do not level up this RQ too quickly. Uh, you may be tempted by thinking, oh, if I level up quickly, then I won't have to worry about it anymore. Or I can play with all the big people in events, or then I can use all my good cars in one deck. But this is a severe beginner mistake that you have to avoid. In fact, I would say it's probably the most important thing you should avoid. So how do you avoid this? You want, I hear you cry. Well in the single player, in the campaign, do not replay events until, well, you're much more well established. For example, say in this in the UK Midlands, say you get one star on level three and you think, but there's all these rewards here I haven't got yet. Do not go back for them. Do not try and get a better score. This is just going to end in sadness, dismay, and you're probably gonna find yourself in a hole crying most nights um, with a bed sheet over your face. So do not do that. But obviously later on as you get better, if you need to collect some cars for fusing, or maybe you find that, I don't know, you need some extra money or something, then that's a, definitely a good way to come back through and collect all the rewards. I think I've got a couple of events I haven't finished yet, but. I'm probably never gonna do them because I'm just special. Yes, and another important thing is when you level up in RQ, you do get tougher restrictions in events. And then this will also lead to the fact that you're most likely gonna get tougher opponents in those high RQs, because you're gonna get people, if say you level up to RQ 500, but you've got like, I don't know, one legendary, you're gonna find yourself in some big problems 
as you realize that you actually don't have the cast to compete with people in RQ500 who probably got multiple legendaries by then. So that's a big mistake. Don't level up your RQ or you're going to suffer because I did that. I can talk from personal experience. I really, really suffered. I found myself always in the bottom tier of events and it took at least half a year to recover. Don't do that. Next piece of beginner advice also um, leading in about the campaign is don't sell your campaign cars too quickly because you'll find the majority of them are actually quite good and quite useful at low RQs. So if we go to UK Midlands, it's the first car you get this Caterham. It's actually quite useful for a rare, good handling car. If you head all the way over down to France, you get this Renault. It's not the greatest, but it's super rare. It might help you get started and could be useful. If you head to USA, this Camaro is actually a very useful rare dragster. You'll find it's quite good. Um, in terms of MRA, so that's useful to keep, things like that. And of course, by the time you get to the end, Monte Carlo, you have this wonderful McLaren 12C, which is probably a really, well, not probably, it is a really good legendary to start off with at 88RQ. It's probably, it's, it's around the middle of all legendaries in the game, so it's good. Um, so yeah, all the campaign cars, don't sell them off too quickly. Um, it's a good idea to keep most of them and you probably will keep them, most of them for, well, not most of them, with the better ones, you'll just keep them for quite a long time into the future. Um, next part about not selling cars, don't sell your low RQ cars. Okay, as I'm playing and helping uh, Swong to get going with his top drives career, um, <laughs> career, is <laughs> not the right word. <laughs> So I figured out why beginners are tempted to sell their low RQ cars because as I've seen with Swong, he's only got 33 slots. You're not going to get anywhere with a 33 car garage. So I can see why people are thinking, oh, I want to get better at the game. So I'm going to have to sell those commons, sell those uncommons, maybe even sell those rares so I can fit my super rares and above in and help me to continue to keep growing my garage and do better in events. But in the long run, especially with special event challenges and things like that, um, to test the diversity of a garage, there will be requirements of commons or uncommons, so you need to have those in your deck. Um, you know, in part three, I'll be helping you figure out which cards are good for keeping, so um, make sure you subscribe for that, and I'll explain exactly how to know which ones are to keep. But do not just sell off all your low RQ cards, keep the good ones, you will need them later on. Okay. Next one, I can talk from personal experience, unfortunately. It's held cars. Do not forget to collect your held cars, especially when you have something good in them. Okay, I'm lazy. So as you can see, I've had this car here for 16 hours. Still haven't collected it or sold it or done anything with it because I'm special. Um, basically, if you get something good, just collect it and lock it straight away. When I say lock, when you click on the car, you see this lock unlock button there. You can that will be a lock if it's not locked, and that will stop you from accidentally selling it or fusing it away mistakenly. Don't forget to collect your held cars because once, not that long ago actually, probably last year, no, earlier this year, I got an epic golf R. I was really proud of myself. Completely forgot about it. 24 hours later, I was like, oh, where's my golf R? Oh, that's right, I didn't collect it, and uh, it might have been gone. For a bit. Fortunately, the support team was very helpful and they were able to track it down and restore it into my garage, which was very good of them. But don't let this happen because the support team may not always be able to help you restore it. So just avoid the situation and just collect the car, save yourself the trouble. Um, and obviously, locking cars that are in your garage that you know you want, you want to keep so you don't accidentally fuse it or sell it because I've sold prize cars before. It's that ridiculous. Don't do that. Just lock what you want, be certain about it, and don't be lazy like me because laziness gets you bad stuff. Okay, moving on. The next part is all about understanding surfaces, driver train, and tires in the game. This is an integral part of the game because this is basically how all the races work. It all depends on the surfaces you're on, also the drivetrain. So, surfaces. All right, I'm putting up on screen now. It's a table of coefficients. I know it looks quite complicated, but this table of coefficients is gonna be very important because it's gonna show you which tires 
and a ranking of which tires are best or worst on each surface. So this will help you to understand looking at the track sets, you can figure out oh, which tires I should be looking for, things like that. And in the general terms, front wheel drive, sorry, four wheel drive is better than rear wheel drive, which is better than front wheel drive. And this is gonna play a part in every surface except dry asphalt, even wet asphalt, the four wheel drive and the rear wheel drive yeah, each going to be better than each other and better than front wheel drive. So make sure you take that into account when you build your decks. Um, so yes, understand this sheet of coefficients. Obviously the closer to one, the better the grip is on that surface. So make sure you understand that, apply it into your deck building. And if you've got any comments or questions in the description, not in the description, the comment section down below, I would be glad to help you out. Uh, okay, next thing is another common misconception amongst um, beginner players, which I had this same problem, um, is understanding how ground clearance works. Because on city streets, when you encounter that for the first time, you're probably going to be clueless why your car gets stuck on these little speed bumps, but the other person's car just goes flying through, through like it's nothing. So it's all down to ground clearance. So if say I go to my Bugatti Chiron and just have a look here, ground clearance is low. This means it will not get over a speed hump very quickly. But if I head over down to say this Mitsubishi Lancer Evolution and head down, see ground clearance is medium. Or maybe even if I head to this Bentley Bentayga, which is high. So medium or high ground clearance will clear the speed bumps easy, no problem. But low ground clearance will get stuck and that is going to lose you a lot of points. So be careful with that. And obviously ground clearance on things like hill climbs, off-road, um, ground clearance is helpful there, as well as four-wheel drive, obviously, and tires. Um, but yeah, be careful and be aware of ground clearance. Understand how it works to help you get better. Okay, also need to talk about weight. Now, the handling statistic on the car is not the full story because say put, I don't know, this Bentley Bentayga of handling 81 on a G-Force test against, I don't know, something else I have of handling 81. If that car is significantly lighter than this Bentley Bentayga, it will win easily on the G-Force test because on tighter, twistier things like G-Force tests, indoor karting circuit slaloms, weight is essential. It gives you like, hand, like a sort of handling boost, I guess around those tighter corners so make sure you check the weight of the car this bentley's 2.3 tons it's not going anywhere and this something like kdm crossbow gd4 look at that under a ton it's going to do very well and be quite quick on those twistier things so make sure you be aware of that and understand that again if you have any questions let me know in the comments and finally my last piece of advice in this video is don't go into an event blindly always check the track sets. So we press this yellow chat icon at the top. You go to the KT Play in-game forum. If you head over to events, as you can see here, you can see all the different events. It's very, this very helpful man called Mousetrap. Um, he always makes these little posts that give you all of the track sets for every event, which can be very helpful. So you don't go in blind. All right, I'd make it, make this suggestion. Um, follow Mousetrap. So every time you come in here and you just press follow, it will just show you all his posts straight away. So you don't need to go searching for them because it's a bit of a nightmare sometimes. So if I head over to this Hills and Thrills event here, and if I just casually scroll down, you'll see, oh, track conditions. And show it tells you the weather, the types of tracks you see, just all sorts of things. So you know what the surfaces, you all know what to expect going in and you can plan your deck. You can see hill climb, a dry hill climb and a quarter mile. You want something, maybe a bit of a drag specialist there. But you've got some wetter tracks. You want maybe something with four wheel drive or standard tires. So you can plan these things just purely by looking at the track sets. So don't make the mistake of going in blind. Give it your best shot. And no matter what, even if your deck looks hopeless, going into an event, just enter it, get the plastic pack, get the 5,000 cash. It'll all add up and yeah, don't waste the opportunity. Just take the money. Don't worry about the trophies just yet. Just get the rewards and continue to buy more packs, get a bigger garage and become the best top right player. Yeah, I'm normal. 
And that's basically it. I hope I haven't bored you all out with this video. It's been 17 minutes of recording, hopefully a bit less after I've edited this. But there you go. That's part one about basics and beginner mistakes to avoid in top knives. If you found this video at all useful or interesting or hopefully maybe entertaining because I'm obviously a um, very funny person. Ha ha. Ha 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 See, I'm very funny. You can hear people laughing in the background. Um, so yeah. <laughs> Alright, I alright, okay, I'm just gonna end this video before I <laughs> draw myself in <into laughs> shame. Um, so yeah, please hit the like button if you enjoyed it at all and subscribe if you want to see more top drives content or more content on other games on the channel. Comment down below anything, comment down hi or your favorite fruit or day of the week. I don't care, just say something, I'll reply to you. Um and yeah, have a uh, download top drives. If you haven't already, check it out. Hopefully it's beginning eyes will help you to get started, get your feet firmly set on the ground. That's not a saying. I made that up. And um, please consider supporting me on Patreon to help me ground my feet in some dough. Just kidding. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I might want to try out some new games in the future and it would be great if you guys could help fund that by a small donation on Patreon. Really appreciate it. Um, so yeah, I'm just waffling now. Have a wonderful rest of the day and I'll catch you all in part two coming out soon if I'm not a potato and decide to sleep instead of editing or filming. <laughs>